Republican presidential hopeful Congressman Ron Paul is pro-life. He wants to preserve family values by ending U.S. wars abroad, and he wants to restore the dollar's value. These values helped him win the recent Values Voters Straw Poll. This, after Congressman Paul won straw polls in California and South Carolina and at the Conservative Political Action Conference earlier this year. But social conservatives like Tony Perkins from the Family Research Council scoff at Ron Paul's most recent victory, saying the real winner is businessman Herman Cain. With Congressman Paul's steady success, why are so many conservative leaders seemingly at odds with the voters? Here to discuss is Republican strategist Jack Berkman. Jack, it's a pleasure. Welcome Judge, good to be with you. All right, so the essence of Ron Paul's campaign is more individual freedom and less government. That is not exactly what we have heard from the value voters, the conservative, social conservatives, who basically want the government to use its powers to induce people uh, into a certain way of behaving with their personal lives. Yeah, although Ron Paul, I can see what's happening, Judge, because he covers it on all fronts. You have social conservative, you have small government, it's anti-Fed, he's anti-intervention uh, in Afghanistan, Afghanistan. He ties together a package of things that very much appeal to social conservatives. I'm going to make a bold prediction. Go ahead. I'm not, Ron Paul could win, could win the GOP nomination. A lot of people are going to think that's fanciful. Let's take a look at it. Perry is starting to stumble. Bachman and Gingrich probably already out. Romney, the front runner, but I don't think he, it's impossible for him to win. He can't get through the South on Super Tuesday. Question becomes, who's left? You have Kane surging. I don't think he, he Kane is a neophyte, no real political experience. I don't look for that to go anywhere. Ron Paul, Rick Santorum, I could easily see Paul surging. All right, can you see a libertarian Ron Paul appealing to social conservatives when he's in favor of legalizing drugs and legalizing prostitution? Well. He's, now, know. these are not necessarily issues. The drugs, yes, the prostitution, no, that affect the president or, or the federal level. No one, no one is pristine. I can see, I can see Ron Paul catching on. I, I'm not saying I, I think it, it will happen, but I can definitely see this happening because, again, if you look at the whole range of issues and you look at who else is out there, there aren't, there aren't a lot of choices. Has the Republican Party changed over the years? Goldwater, Reagan, George W. Bush... Ron Paul. I mean, there was a time when things like end the Fed were anathema. No, no serious Republican would be caught saying oh, it. Sure. There were things, times when you're not in favor of our troops. Well, I'm in favor of the troops. I'm just not in favor of putting them in harm's way for a cause that doesn't help our freedom or our safety. Was arguments you wouldn't hear from Republicans. Now you do. The taboo. Even Newt Gingrich agrees with Ron Paul on the wars and not ending the Fed, but at least auditing the Fed. The taboo is becoming reasonable. It's becoming mainstream. Well, to your first point, the party has become much more conservative. There's no question about that. And some of the things that people just whispered 20 years ago, now you can say out in the open. Fortunately, you have people saying what they believe, uh, which is a new thing. Here's what really shocked the system, what the Fed did with AIG, right. which I would argue is the worst thing the U.S. government ever did to its people. That is a The worst thing. W would you agree with me that that event, bailing out a private insurance company from the consequences of its own bad business judgment, unifies those kids downtown, no the progressives question. and the libertarians it's, all agree on that. I agree. It's bringing far left and far right together. It's bringing, uh, it's bringing, as you say, progressives and libertarians, a lot of groups that wouldn't be together, lots of strange bedfellows. It's just that AIG had become a house of bookies. It was a horrifying thing. Right. You have just one, one group of bankers uh, uh, washing the hands of the other group of bankers. It was terrible. Uh, Bernanke knew not to do that. It was a horrid abuse of power and then followed up with TARP, which was almost as bad. But I think AIG really shocked the system, and that's why you have all the anti-Fed talk. Got it. Jack Berkman, it's a pleasure. Thanks Thank for joining you, us. Later in the show, Republican President...